Good morning guys. Today's video I'm going to be talking about what you can sow in January. Now it's quite a controversial topic because light levels aren't very high, temperature isn't very high, so potentially your seedlings could struggle. But I'm going to give you some tips on how I ensure my seedlings get off to the best start. And by the way, this is without grow lights, this is without uh, heat mats. Um, so yeah, hopefully you can have a you know, successful start to the year. Right. So in this video, I'm going to cover two vegetable seeds you can sow in January and two flower seeds I'm trying. Now the vegetable seeds are fairly sort of well-known commons. I'm going to start with the first one, which is broad beans. So these are some that I started a couple weeks earlier. Um, now the big key for this whole video is you're going to be sowing indoors. Now indoors, you can control the temperature. So something like broad beans only needs about 10 degrees Celsius in order for the seeds to germinate. So it's really easily achievable um, in, in, in a house. And you know, if you were starting these off under cover and you're able to have a small heat source or something, you'd probably achieve that in you know outside. But typically most of us are, you know are going to start our broad beans off indoors in January. And you know, when they start to look like this, it's worth then moving them out into a greenhouse because broad beans they don't need the 10 degrees to grow. They only need the 10 degrees to germinate. Once germinated, you can give them less temperature, but try and give them more light. And that's the key with sowing in January is light is the challenge, not so much temperature, temperature you can obtain, but you know, ensuring you give them good light levels. Because if I leave these inside, these will grow up and they'll search for the light, they'll get very leggy. And then when I come to plant them out in sort of February, March time, any kind of frost, because they're so tall, when they get the frost, they'll fall over, collapse, and if it then rains, they turn into mush and they rot and, you know, you, you, you know, the plant dies. So it's really important that you have like short, stocky plants this time of the year. But broad beans is one that you can definitely sow this time of year. Now, the next um, sort of non-controversial vegetable seed you can start off in January is onions. Onions are quite hardy. They'll take some frost and starting the seedlings off now ensures that you'll be harvesting these in hopefully July time. Um, hopefully I'll put a picture up of my sort of harvest last July. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's really easy to grow onions. They're not particularly challenging. However, I've left these in the house maybe a little bit too long. You see some of them are getting quite tall and leggy and lanky. And there's a risk here that, you know, if I were to continue leaving them in the house where they're continuing to search for light, that, you know, they're going to sort of turn into quite weak plants. So again, a bit like the broad beans, I'm going to move these into the greenhouse now um, so that they sort of can toughen up a bit and, um, you know, get the light levels that they need to grow properly. Now, just before I move on to the flower seedlings, I just thought I'd show you the greenhouse I'm using. It's just one of these standard sort of um, plastic upright things but while I'm moving these in here to ensure they get the right light levels and things it is still worth keeping an eye on things like weather and stuff if for example we were seeing some temperatures of maybe I don't know minus probably anything anything more than maybe minus three degrees celsius I'd be considering bringing these in at least overnight just to avoid that really sort of cold snap not so much that I think it will kill the plants or anything but it's going to sort of slow down, stunt their growth, especially if the small amounts of soil freeze. That can be a bit of an issue because, you know, it stops root development, stops everything. Whereas, you know, while these might not change much on top in, in terms of the sort of leaf growth and things, underneath the root system will be, you know, growing quite vigorously, hopefully. So this is where this video gets a little bit controversial because I am pushing my luck with some of these flowers. But one flower I'm trying to grow, and I think I'll have success, is lupins. So um, lupins are hardy perennial. Um, you know, they come back every year, even in this climate. So I am expecting these guys to survive. Um, I've had quite good germination because, you know, again, inside the house, you know, next to a radiator, they've had the levels of heat they need in order to germinate. And now it's just about, you know, ensuring those you know, good levels of light. But I'm hoping with having these sort of established nice and early, I can get them out. They can get established in the sort of um, flower beds. And I should be able to see some sort of blooms in, you know, I'm hoping maybe sort of uh, end of May, June time. The next plant is, hopefully you can see from these videos and the photos I'll put up that it's growing a little bit leggy, but it's a poached egg plant. Now this one, again, the seed packet says something like I can sow in, in February, March time indoors. So sowing it in January, you know, I'm hoping I can kind of get away with doing it a little bit early, but 
best thing about this plant is a brilliant companion plant for your vegetables because it attracts the flowers and i'll put videos up or pictures up but um the flowers attract beneficials or parasitic wasps and things like that things that will eat aphids things that will you know maybe attack slugs and things so it's it's really important i think when you know when you're planting your vegetable garden to do consider what sort of companion plants you can do but this is this is one that i'm quite interested to um get growing right i hope you like that video I think sowing in January is a little bit controversial and, and maybe there is an argument that you should wait but I will tell you now I had a great experience last year with the onions and the broad beans. I think it's perfectly doable. I think you just need to be mindful that whatever you can do to ensure that the seedlings get enough light is the top priority and I think if you can give them good light then you should be onto a success. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you all soon for more videos.